Hello sexy, we've made the lights low because this video contains deception. I decided to follow the lead of Brad and Dan on YouTube who I shall link in the description down there. I'm going to tell you three facts about my life that are absolutely 100% true. I'm also going to be telling you one very big fat porky pie and you have got to guess which one's the lie. Comment below and tell me which one you think is the lie of these four facts that are coming up. I will be revealing what the lie is in the description in about a week or so's time. I'll put in the description which one the lie was, but for now, you've got to guess what the lie is. Fun! Fact number one, I hated sport at school, particularly rugby and football. Often, almost always, I would get a sick note from my mother Father, a little bit harder to get a sick note from. I don't know what, like when you think about it now, you think, I'm an adult now, why the fuck didn't you give me a sick note? It was only like 10 years ago. What the fuck's wrong with you? I didn't get a sick note for what I'm assuming was probably rugby, um, because I don't think I would have gone to these lengths for football, but I basically decided that I needed to injure myself. Um, I took a pair of scissors and proceeded to kind of hack away at my ankle. I don't know what I was doing. I think. Part of me thought the ankle is a place that will often be sprained or broken or fractured, but I was trying to cut it. I don't know what I thought would, I don't know why I thought that would work. I was attempting to cut my ankle. I could have cut any part of my body. The ankle was where I went for. One of the least fleshy parts of our body. But anyway, I went for it. Attempted to cut my ankle. Made like the, the most pathetic of, of kind of holes, if you can call it that. It was incredibly small, it scabbed over, and I'm assuming I had to go and do rugby anyway. Fact number two, when I lived in Wood Green in London, I had to get a bus called the 29 quite often. Wood Green, if you don't know, is quite far north, um, and it's where the 29 will end. So it was the perfect bus for me. I'd get it from Wood Green to Camden to go to work at Camden Bar and Kitchen. One time, on that ride, I was sitting behind a child, a male child, a boy, some would call him, with his father, and they were on their way to somewhere. And I will often, if there's somebody of slight interest, I'll often turn my iPod off that I usually have on and listen to the conversations around me. Usually this will be if there's two, like, you know, 18-year-old, like, lads in front of me, I want to listen to what they're saying, or a child, because children say a load of bullshit and might as well just have a listen, entertain myself. This child, it was some sort of birthday, or it had been some sort of birthday of his. He was kind of like five or six, seven, eight, who, uh, who knows how old children are these days, I've no idea. He had some money or whatever else that he'd been given by someone, and they were obviously off somewhere, and he was wanting to spend his money. You know what kids are like with money. They just want to spend it wherever they go. Just, I want to spend this money like an adult. So that was all going on. And they got off the bus, and I was still on the bus. And I noticed... Oh, I don't want to say the bus hadn't gone, but it hadn't gone. <laughs> and I noticed that the child had left £40 on the seat. And I decided to manoeuvre myself from my seat and sit where they had sat and have that money for myself. Because I was living in Wood Green, I was not working in TV, I had no money, and £40 meant a lot to me, and I clearly decided that £40 meant more to me than it might mean to an eight-year-old. And I could have gone out of that door and, and, and told the dad or the boy that they'd left their £40, but I didn't. I took that for myself and I didn't tell anyone. And usually if I find money on the floor or anywhere, I will tell people. I'll be like, I found £20, I found £5, this is amazing. But I clearly was embarrassed about finding that because I never told anybody. Fact number three. Now I'm very honest with you, YouTube, and I am kind of honest about my sex life in a way. I'm not too honest because I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. I don't mind about me, whatever. But before I became too kind of familiar with the world of Grinder and meeting up with guys for anonymous sex, not that I'm massively familiar with that now, but I'm not going to lie, I'm not a saint. That has happened. It's happened, okay? But before I was very familiar with that world, I met up with a guy when I lived in this... I'd just moved here to this room. I met up with a guy who was in Wood Green, in fact. So I thought, okay, I know Wood Green. I used to live there, as I told you, previous fact. Lived in Wood Green. This guy said, meet me in Wood Green. He seemed a bit chavvy, and that's attractive sometimes. 
when you're whatever. So I went, got on the bus, probably had a drink on the way, and met this guy. And when he came up to me, I was like, I, I, I'm already, I'm not attracted to this man. I wasn't attracted to this man. I think he was called Michael. We walked quite away. I didn't fancy him. Why was I continuing to walk there? So we got to his house, went up these metal stairs. He see, he was in like an open enough area. I wasn't going into some sort of council estate or, you know, it seemed right. Went in, there were girls in his room, like women in his room, and they looked skanky. He looked skanky, I'm gonna say this. He was in like his 40s at least. He looked skanky and they were in the room like smoking or whatever. And they were just like, oh no, said hello to me. And I was like, oh my God, why are there people here? This is weird. He took me to his room, we sat on his bed and we just sat there like, and I was just thinking, I can't even, like even, like, it's my Britishness that stops me from immediately seeing somebody and going no, because I'm too polite for that, I'm too British. So I just went along with it. And then I was sitting on his bed thinking, I can't physic, the physical motions that you need for such an encounter weren't gonna work. So I just sort of, and also I just wanted to be out of there. So I, we just sat there for a while and I just, and he put his hand on my leg and I just said, I, I'm gonna go home or something to that effect. And I left his house and walked home and it was really weird and awkward. Fact number four, I had a threesome once on my break at Camden Kitchen. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the bare bones of the fact. Um, I was working at Camden Kitchen as a waiter. It was a double shift, which were very common. We would work in the morning and then we would have an hour break and then we would work in the evening. And I, my hour break, I went on Grinder. I found a guy who wanted a threesome. I went to his house. I had said threesome and then I returned to work all within an hour. I didn't fancy either of the people in the threesome and the whole experience stopped me from meeting anyone randomly on Grinder for at least six months. So bitches, comment below what you think I was lying about. Fact one, fact two, fact three or fact four. And I will reveal what the lie was in about a week's time. I'll just put it in the description down there. I'm not gonna make a video about it or anything. I'll just stick it in the description. So be sure to come back um, and let me reveal what the lie was. And um, if you forget, then who cares? Just make your guess down there. It'll be interesting to see what you think I was lying about. Other than that, you may as well fuck off. Goodbye.